Well, hello there, this is Shane from Shane's Reviews, and I hope you're having a great day today. And, oh boy, this one's a book. I've read some of these books before in the past, and I was like, there's a little bit of merit here, so maybe if it comes out, or if the author comes out with another one, maybe I'll check it out. I, I gotta ask a very prominent question up front, right? Sure, this video's starting out scattered, but Jesus Christ. Yahtzee Crushaw. Is this dude a troll? ultimate troll. That's what I want to know. Because, oh my god. Usually I'm like, hey, production's great. Everything was clear. But I gotta know, is is this guy for real? Is, is this really what he thinks people will enjoy? Now, don't get me wrong. Whenever he is narrating this book, which I'll announce here in a second, but whenever he's narrating the book and he's speaking in his own voice, his own voice is perfectly fine. But a professional narrator, this man is not. The choices that were made, I don't know if he did this himself. If he did this all by himself, congratulations, you did a great job. But if he had a production team, maybe you need less yes man. Because one, the choice whenever you did the stuff with uh, Jessica towards the end of the book, holy crap, that's a long diatribe. And scraps, if you would, please make my voice demonic. Make, make it sound horrible. Make, make it, it big and mean. mean. Now, what if we took that and instead of using a pitch shift and then stacking the audio so that you got three different versions or something like that, where one is high, one is low, so you get kind of like a harmonic one in the middle and all the audio is adjusted together, what if we did it like this? Dig, Dig deep, deep because, because if you do, do things, things will come to you. So if we take all three of those and we put them together and you have to listen to it for almost 20 minutes straight whenever there's this big end scene dialogue going on, how likely are you to continue to listen to the book? That's why I'm asking if this dude's a troll because even like in a movie and in stuff like that, you'll have a point sometimes, even in TV shows, where somebody will be narrating something as they are typing, right? And there, there's this nuance that you can do where you can make things sound like they're really far away and it's not like the 1996 ocular penetration act where it's it's just like it's just so much in it's so present it's so there that it's so distracting that you're not actually listening and you can fade in and you can fade out so like whenever you start these big narrations where it's going to be a email well you could say quite simply this guy's writing an email and then you don't need all that crap then end scene start a new chapter right i mean there, there's a lot of little things that you could do if you're not a troll if you are a troll and you're doing this on purpose congratulations because you've got a response out of me and that is i absolutely hated the way that this book was recorded i didn't like the the timbre i didn't like the way that the characters were represented i didn't like the way that they were portrayed at all he's not a character actor and i <sighs> Maybe there's room for growth. And, and before I got into the actual book, because I didn't want any of this to affect the way that I talked about the book, do not listen to this. If you get the book, get it in some kind of hard copy. Get it in like a softback, hardback, PDF, whatever. Because I, I honest to God think that Kindle could read this book to you better than Yahtzee did. So yeah, there's that. Did it get an emotional response out of me? Bet your rear end it did, I hated it. But I did listen to the whole thing because now I'm gonna talk about the book and not the production, okay? Which is gonna be hard to separate because the production was so bad. But the name of the book is Differently Morpheus, or Differently Morpheus. It was wrote by Yahtzee Croshaw and it was narrated by the same. I'm gonna try not to let the production continue to askew me in my oh my God belligerent feelings of you really made me listen to that you thought that was acceptable so this book is interesting because it has to do with magic and it has to do with people in a place where magic is just kind of hidden underneath the surface and there's a lot of things that happen in this book there's different creatures there's different like people that have different magical abilities there's actually some people that are kind of possessed, but they're referring to them, I think it was like dual personality or something like that. But but the point is, is 
he went through a lot of effort to create this world that if it was just narrated properly would go so well in an audiobook format and it would go so well in like a um like short video like breaking it up into different points uh and, and having like a, a mini series on youtube or netflix or something like that it would do really well with that it's it's actually fairly entertaining minus the production <laughs> mm. but you've got all these different types of like just explanations that are so different from what we usually get with things that have to do with magic and i actually applaud him for his efforts in that because he didn't have to go that far he didn't have to go that way he didn't have to actually not necessarily spoon feed because he didn't and that, that's a big pet peeve of mine as well but he didn't spoon feed he just gave us what we needed as we needed to understand what was going on and to help explain the universe of which he was creating within this book so as far as the story goes it's i would think it would be aimed at like early 20s maybe for the demographic because it's got a lot of that kind of a feel to it but that that's not a bad point either because it's it's actually well done if we look at the literature i think that my my bias is going to be so heavily towards the production quality that i'm going to think that that book was good regardless <laughs> even if it was crap uh, just because the audio production was so bad. I'm looking for something to redeem this book and to tell you about. And I think it has to do uniqueness of the awkwardness of the main character as the story is being told around. I think her name was Allison. A lot of the characters that were in there were completely over the top one way or the other. So if it's not like uh, heat death of the universe, boring character, then it's you know, popcorn exploding on top of molten aluminum while elephant paste or devil's devil's paste is being exploded by Mark Rober in the background. Uh, there's no middle ground really with the exception of Allison. She's about the only normal character in the book and it, it's kind of cool because she's like the rock <laughs> kind of and, and all this craziness that's going around. And some of it has to do with bureaucratic BS. Some of it has to do with different accents that are being used to portray different people so it seems like some of them are like uh cogni or some of them are like just english gangster kind of uh where it's like you know the it's, it's just it's so far out there that, that's my main point but whenever it comes to the actual points of the book of this is because of this this is because of this this magic is because of this these people that are possessed they have to choose kind of to be possessed and then they have to choose if they want to still be there after the possession. I mean, all these little things like that, those, those are gold in books. So he's done well with that. Uh, but as far as like the portrayal of the characters, it's really skewed me in a bad way towards this book and towards him as an author. I'd say it, but I mean, you could do better. Hire somebody. Hire somebody that has got some experience. There's a lot of people on Fiverr. There's a lot of people. Granted, you won't have complete control over it, which might be the issue, but at least I think that it would be based for a larger audience and would probably do you as an author better because more people would be attuned to actually finishing the book if they're listening to any of your things for the first time. That's that's going to be my biggest, biggest suggestion in Yahtzee. So can I recommend this book? I honestly don't think I can if it's audio format. Um, I would say very handedly, stay clear unless you want to see what not to do. Because this thing is just rife of horrible accents. However, if you're picking it up in a physical copy of sorts, like PDF or softbook or hardback, which I don't think there would be any of those, but if you were to get it that way and you had your own internal voice that you were experiencing the story with, I believe that your experience would be so much more enriched than mine. So yeah, if, if, you, if you're audio listener only, don't get it. If you do get books from time to time and you want to check out something that's quirky, awkward, funny, has to do with magic, and done in a different way and a unique way from a lot of other books that have magic in it, it might actually be worth you checking it out. I know it took me a while to get there, but 
I'm kind of sore about this one. I'm still raw about it, and I don't think I'm going to get over it over the next two weeks. And of course, I would be the type that would have bought both of the Dagon books together. So I've got not only the first one that was horrible, I've probably got the second one that's going to be just as bad to get through too. So hopefully I can keep that duality of purpose and recognize the literature for what it is instead of letting the audiobook run it for me. Well, don't know which one of the videos you'll be checking out if they're coming in, either this one or this one. But if you pick one of those two, I will see you in the next video. The question of the week, I think just simply enough, if you had somebody tell you you were doing a bad job multiple times and multiple people saying you were doing a bad job at a job that you're doing, and it would be very easy for you to hire other people to take that workload off of you and do a better job with it and make you more money, would you accept that offer?